I love water, so it is very nice to be surrounded by it and to be able to jump in whenever I want and to go for a swim. It does feel like a never-ending summer holiday. I like that we are able to move around without having to take the tent down and build it up again. Yeah, it just really feels like a home. Since my childhood I always liked to build stuff, but I never thought that I would want to build something myself where I would live on. But there's so much knowledge on the internet that you can find. So whatever you can think of, you can also make it. Before moving with the tent to the raft, I have been living in a tent for already two years. First half a year in a forest, then one year on an island and then last summer on the raft. So including this summer, it's been three years for me of uh, tent life. We built the raft last summer. It was also the time when you came to Sweden. Mm -hmm. My parents, they helped us also. I think it was within a couple of days, three days that we built the structure with the, the barrels and the wood frame. And then during the next weeks, we started to build the things on top uh, and then set the tent on it. So it was quite fast and simple. This year, we will be living on the raft all of summer and then probably also a bit longer in September. It all depends on the weather. For now, we are on the Dalsand Canal. That's a lake system that's connected through locks. So we will travel the whole way that's possible. There are 18 locks and you can go a total length of 360 or 380 kilometers uh, altogether. We are quite slow with our, our raft, like four kilometers per hour. And also we just like to stay at places where it's nice for longer. So we're not sure if we can make it to all places that we want to visit but uh, at least that's the, that's the goal. And if we don't see all the places, then we can come back next summer. We are now just trying how it feels, the raft life on the go when you move around, and also all the things that we still want to build uh, on the raft. So probably this is just the pilot episode for <laughs> <laughs> next year or further years of exploring the, the whole area. It's a self-built raft out of impregnated wood, so it's weather resistant. As floating devices, we have 28 200 liter barrels and it's 3 meter 90 by 7 meters long. The raft is 3 meter 90 so that it would fit through the locks uh, in the Dalsand Canal, which the maximum width is 4 meters. However, the tent we have is 5 meters in diameter. That's why we have uh, some flip-up mechanism on the side that we can flip up the tent and then fit through the lock. The tent we have is the Sibley 500 Protec by Canvas Camp. It's the version with two doors, one in the front, one in the back, which is quite practical on the raft since the engine is in the back and we can then actually see through the tent where we are going. We also have a steering mechanism here in the front, which are those two uh, metal wires. Uh, when you pull on them, it uh, turns the engine in the back. We also are about to build a steering wheel, which will be made out of these things here in the front. And the goal is to have then a real steering wheel here, which is a bit easier than just to pull on the wires. We have a six horsepower, two stroke petrol engine. And it is old, but it's reliable. And it was quite cheap because we got it second hand. It is a little bit weak for a raft this size. The weight of the raft is one and a half tons, so it's probably not the best option. We would have liked to have an electrical one, but they are quite expensive and then we would also need more solar panels. Here in the back we have our two solar panels. They're both uh, 150 watts. They are connected to three batteries. Here we also have more storage space under the solar panels. On this side we have uh, petrol. We have altogether 80 liters that we can uh, carry with us. We also have all the oil we need for the engine and some other tent stuff. Here we also have our anchor that we got uh, second hand. It's in the water at the moment. We have some more boat stuff here that we need. And also here in the back we have some storage compartments under the deck. 
here we have the, the batteries for the solar system and in the middle we have the petrol tank for the engine. Here on the other side we have the second solar panel. This space we use to store some of the firewoods that we have. Uh, we also have our trash here. We also have a, a bouldering crash pad here that we don't use so much for bouldering but it's, it's a nice uh, couch to sit somewhere when we're on shore. And back here we also have our toilet. Mostly we use the bathroom in the forest. Uh, we just take the shovel and uh, dig a hole. But when we are uh, on our way we have this as a backup solution. It's a um, dry composting toilet. We don't have any cover for it yet so maybe before we come into more civilized and populated areas we should build some privacy shielding around it. Whenever we park on the shore somewhere we have two ropes that go to a tree on the land and one anchor in the back so that we are kind of like a spider in between that the waves don't push us against the, the rocks. We also have a canoe with us in case of emergency we could use it as a lifeboat maybe but uh, now we just use it as transportation for construction wood still, since we are still in the process of building stuff. And we also collect waste. We, we have found like this <laughs> big barrel uh, already. So we try to clean up the shores. We have built this ladder because I really much enjoy to jump into the water and it's the most fun when we are somewhere in the middle of the lake and I did not manage to get up the raft so we'll just put it here and we can go back on deck. We have a door with plexiglass windows and this is very practical because Whenever we would close the tent because it is cold or because there are a lot of mosquitoes, we can now still look out and there is also daylight coming in. For the rainy days we have a tarp that we set up here, but it is not very stable so we always have to take it down when we drive. In the entrance we have mainly storage space. And then this is our bed. And in the morning we just put the sleeping bags away and it's also a couch. Wherever I am I hang up some personal photos and some memories from past travels. And then this painting is done by Yo-Yo's mom. So I really like this part, it makes me feel at home. And it's great for storage as well. So underneath we do have all our clothes, also in boxes as always, and we have some music, instruments, and then further in the back we have some things that we don't use every day. This is the Orland camp stove, it's very nice that there is glass on three sides so that we can actually see the fire. Over here we have the kitchen area. The table is also self-built and we have borrowed the chairs. So now we have a cozy place to sit, to play cards and also to cook. I love to use a lot of spices, that's why I have a full box with me. And also some homegrown chili, which was a gift from a friend, so that we can also eat a little bit spicy. Our diet is very simple, we mainly eat pasta with vegetables in tomato sauce or with pesto and then a lot of rice, quinoa, bulgur or couscous and beans, some chickpeas, a lot of vegetables whenever we have them. We cannot always go food shopping so that's why uh, there's only one apple left but we will be in town again soon so we can stock up. We do not have a fridge but as we are vegan it's not very necessary. The only thing is that we have to make sure to eat the leftovers quite quickly so that they don't go bad. Normally we use a fuel stove to cook but when it's cold we heat up the wood stove and then we can also cook on there. Whenever we are at a lock or in a village we have the possibility to fill up some drinking water. At the moment we don't really have much anymore, so now we go over and just drink the lake water. To be safe we will put in a water purification tap. 
The water in the Swedish lakes is very clean. We use it to cook and to wash ourselves. And some lakes even have drinking water qualities. I swim in the lakes every day, but it is nice to have some hot water and soap from time to time. So we do heat up water that we put in a pot and then we put it on our stove. I am a little bit ashamed for having learned just recently that you should not use biodegradable soap in an open water source. And we've also learned that you should be at least 60 meters away from the water. So that's what we do now. So we take the pot and go and land. I haven't really been bored because it is quite a lot to do. Whenever we, we go somewhere, this takes uh, a lot of time, of course, and all the daily tasks that you do, like washing dishes, uh, washing clothes, uh, it just all takes longer when, you, when you're outside or uh, making a fire to have it warm. Also, the videos that we make for our YouTube channel, they take up quite a lot of time. Whenever we, we anchor somewhere, uh, we mostly anchor on, on the shore, so we have access to land and whenever we come through some small settlement where there's a grocery store we go grocery shopping of course and also filling up the gas for the for the engine so we take every opportunity but so far we have been mostly in quite remote areas and in the next weeks we will go for the south where we then pass by more settlements and it also will be a bit louder there will be roads that you can hear and then in the end of the summer we will come back again to a more remote place like we are here now. I do find it difficult to be in a different place each night. I mean sometimes we do stay for two or three nights but it is a lot to take in so I think it will be nice after this when we move somewhere else to have some time to reflect on everything. It is quite a cheap lifestyle but there are still some things we need to pay for. We need to pay for uh, gas that's our main expense probably, after food of course. Seven years ago I went on an eight month backpacking trip and ever since then I never wanted to stop traveling. But I've always made sure to live a very minimalistic life. Pretty much all I own is in this tent and that makes it a lot easier to move around. I also had to go back to Switzerland every now and then to earn some money. My stuff is mostly in the tent. All the winter equipment that we have, that's, that's not here, of course, for now. And I still have my computer stored at a friend's place. We also have a car that's parked somewhere until we need it again. We're just full of things. And <laughs> the car is also full of things, yeah. For the past Two, three years I also have been living off of my savings mainly. I have done some work on the side uh, before moving into the tent. I worked in film and television business mostly. I still do some freelance projects but also here in Sweden I started to work as a carpenter which also helped building the raft to get to know this a little bit uh, as well. As nice as it is to live out here in nature, it is of course also challenging to live on a raft. First and foremost, for me, the biggest uh, issue is the small space that, that we have. As I've been living in a tent by myself already for some time before Nora came last year, I was already used to live in a small space, but it got, of course, a bit smaller <laughs> once, once you moved in. So this is for me one of the challenging parts of living on the raft to not have so much space. Another challenging thing is also that we always have to take a look at the weather forecast because when the wind changes during the night um, maybe we are in a windless bay uh, in the evening where it's calm and quiet but then the wind changes and in the morning at like six o'clock you have waves coming in and it, it's shaking maybe it's hitting against the rocks the thing I love the most is the silence. So far we've been in remote places and it is very quiet and I like to just listen to the sounds of nature and to watch the animals and to see the sunset. 
and yeah it's very relaxing even though it's not always silent because our engine is quite loud but if we continue this life next year on the raft as well that's number one priority to have an electric outboard engine absolutely the most enjoyable thing for me probably is just to be able to drive around with everything you have and everything you need and just see different places spend every night in a different bay yeah it, it feels just nice just to be able to move slowly and steadily from one place to another with something that you've built yourself subscribe to explore alternatives and check out our playlists for more stories like this you can also follow yo-yo on youtube at my northern story and you can follow nora on instagram at outdoor diary thanks for watching